Welcome back to another session in food packaging technology. In today's session, we'll be discussing about rigid, semi-rigid and flexible packaging system. And also we'll discuss about different packaging systems for different food products. In the previous classes, we had discussed about packaging systems and we had also discussed about product characteristics and how to choose a packaging material based on the product characteristics and the requirements of the product. So till it reaches to the consumer from the place of production, what all requirements are there, everything need to be taken care of. Accordingly, only the packaging material need to be selected. Now, rigid, semi-rigid and flexible packaging system. Flexible packaging system, it consists of foils, cellophanes and papers. And these are mainly used for packing chips, candies, and this is because they are easy to mold whereas rigid packaging materials they are rigid in their structure and these include glass metal plastics and also they give protection to the content inside from temperatures and packs during transportation so therefore they have very good mechanical resistance to scratches in low temperature storages also and semi-rigid packaging material these are hybrids their properties lies in between flexible and rigid packaging material and these mainly include foams and cardboards which we use for giving protection to products like eggs and wine bottles. Now rigid packaging system it was defined as being unable to bend or being forced out of shape or simply not flexible. So this was the definition which was put forth by EPAC in 2020. And this is a structural component. It contributes to structure and it is highly stable and it supports the product. And the main property of the rigid packaging system, it comes from its strength. So uh, the global rigid packaging market, it was projected that by 2026, there will be a 5.6% growth from 2019. So there's a very great demand for rigid packaging material. And it is also involves utilization of plastic materials for packaging purposes and this is not only for the food and beverages this also finds application in personal care household items and healthcare items so uh, this can be a part of primary packaging secondary packaging or tertiary packaging and we had already discussed the different types of materials that are used as a rigid packaging material or flexible packaging material in the earlier classes this uh, slide it shows the comparison between different materials so here also you can see that plastic materials as a packaging they're very much in demand and only after plastic the paper and paper board items come and their applications are in food and beverage industries chemical industries consumer goods healthcare pharmaceuticals and they usually go as a rigid packaging material it goes as boxes trays containers bottles when we go to the segments in the world market, this is the North America which is utilizing these packaging materials in large amount compared to the other parts of the world. Now this is a comparison table which shows the difference between flexible packaging and rigid packaging. So in flexible packaging, again we have polyethylene, polypropylene, so they are basically called plastics. Also include flexible foams, papers, aluminum foils. Whereas in rigid packaging, we have uh, papers, uh, glass and metals and this will be hard in shape and structure and flexible packaging materials, since they are flexible in nature, they take only less space. So they occupy much lesser space than rigid packaging, whereas rigid packaging, it is bulky in shape and it occupies larger space and it is easier and cost effective to transport the flexible packages and we can customize the shape of the packaging material and rigid packaging the cost is very high because of its bulky size and again weight is lesser for flexible packaging materials whereas it is heavier for rigid packaging materials the rigid packaging material they are prone to deformation though they are rigid they are durable the flexible packaging material it can be punctured or crushed if it is not handled properly now coming to the next topic, we have uh, different packaging systems for dehydrated foods, frozen foods, dairy foods, fresh fruits and vegetables, meat 
and that is animal based products beverages so one thing we have to understand is we cannot have single type of packaging material for all kinds of food it differs from product to product and when we choose a packaging material it depends upon many criteria first main criteria will be the content what is going inside the packaging system so what we are going to pack and what is expected like what is a shelf life what we are expecting from the product in what form it should reach the consumer and what is the cost of the product what will be the environmental conditions how it will be transported so likewise we have to consider everything from the beginning till it reaches to the consumer and also even after it reaching to the consumer it should be able to build up their confidence so every food products they need their own packaging material and it should be unique and also the producer and consumer their viewpoints need to be taken into considerations so now this is a table it shows uh, the control atmospheric conditions for certain commodities when they are transported or storage so for example asparagus if it is stored at 1 to 5 degrees centigrade and with an optimum oxygen content of 21% and carbon dioxide content of 5 to 10% we can get an approximate storage life of 21 days to get this optimum condition of 21 days the packaging material for the asparagus it should meet the requirements that is it should be able to withstand lower temperatures and also it should have good barrier properties for the gases so that the conditions inside the package can remain as such the oxygen level has to be 21 and the carbon dioxide it should not go above 10 percent Similarly, for other products, in case of beets, we don't require uh, the oxygen and carbon dioxide is not controlled and it's only the temperature that is very important. And so the packaging material should be able to withstand lower temperatures and this will help in attaining the storage life of eight months. So it likewise for different products, this is just one example. So what we are expecting, how long you are going to keep the product that is also very important and accordingly when we make changes inside the package the package should be able to withstand all the conditions these are different criteria that need to be taken into consideration when we choose a material for packaging now these are the beneficial aspects of controlled atmosphere asparagus the storage life is uh, extended and also these will help in retaining the sugars, organic acids and proteins and it will retard the toughening of the asparagus and this casing. Similarly, we have the pigments can be retained in green beans. In broccoli, we can retard uh, yellowing and in Brussels, the storage life can be extended. Cabbage, it will be retaining its green color and fresh flavor. All these things will happen or we'll get the benefits only when we are maintaining the conditions which has been discussed in the previous slide so for that when we maintaining the controlled atmosphere but same time the packaging also plays an important role there now these are different types of food products on the right column you can see the normal packaging materials that are used to pack the products for example in case of milk we can go for ldp and lldp linear low density polyethylene and then we have milk powder it can be packed in tin cans with aluminum foil or aluminum foil and polythene laminate so we can have laminates and ghee it can be packed in ldp hdp laminate or nylon and chocolate bars which we commonly see it is packed in aluminum foil and polyethylene laminate we can also pack it in pet and polyethylene laminate then confectionaries like candies they can be packed in paper wax pet polyethylene then ready to eat products like uh, lays and other things it can be packed in pet or bopp that is biaxially oriented polypropylene and can be co-extruded with polyethylene edible oils they are packed in three to five layers of nylon films and products like gems they are packed in bopp or polyethylene then one is pedi, packed in ldp hdp and nylon based films and biscuits they can be packed either in wax coated they can also be packed in glassine or polyethylene, then aluminum foil, paper. So the choice of the packaging material, it depends upon the commodity that is going to be packed inside. For bread, we are going to use wax paper. Biscuits also, we can use wax paper. 
but tea cannot be packed in wax paper. So depending upon the requirement and necessity, we have to choose the packaging material. So this again, it shows compiled table. Apart from the previous materials, we can also go for different types of packaging materials. For example, in dry fruits, we have to give emphasis to seal strength and moisture barrier. So for these reasons, we can select OPA and PE and OPA, OPA and PE. So this can be three layered and biscuits, we can have BOPP and BOPP CPP, then a PET, polythene. And again, here we give an emphasis to seal strength and moisture barrier. In case of candies, it is uh, seal strength, how quickly it can be packed and then moisture barrier. So considering this, we are taking PET and BOPP. So and T is packed in metallized PET. Metal layer, it gives an order barrier. So whatever contents are inside, the order of the contents, it will not go out. And at the same time, we'll get a good seal strength. Then coffee, instant coffee, again, it should have good barrier properties. If moisture enters into the pack, then coffee will form lumps. So that should not happen. So considering that, we select the packaging materials which are lined with aluminum foils. Then we have potato chips. Again, we can go for metallized PET. And the attention is given to high seal strength, integrity, gas retention, and moisture barrier. Again, for rice and pasta, uh, seal strength and integrity is more important. For frozen foods, seal strength is important, integrity is there. And again, it should be able to retain the gas. That is, it should have good barrier properties for moisture as well as gas. Ice creams, they should again have good barrier to moisture properties and water vapor transmission and gas transmission. And it should be able to seal it and it should have high seal strength and integrity. And desserts similarly, good seal strength and integrity. So this is again, what is the application? Accordingly, we choose the material. Now this slide, it shows the use of laminated films in food packaging. Generally, the foods which have low moisture content, that is water activity is very low. Such kind of foods, they are packed in laminated films. So we have snack foods, dry fruits, confectionaries, then biscuits, even ice creams and frozen vegetables, they can be packed in laminated films. And the laminated film, it not only gives a good barrier properties, but also it helps in preventing the loss of order and it reduces the transmission of movement of order from inside or do not let the order to come inside into the product. Because these are very sensitive products and it may take order from outside. So these need to be well protected. And in this case, we use polyvinylin chloride coated with polypropylene. These are two layers actually. And these are used for snack foods, confectionaries, biscuits, crisps and chocolates. And even PVDC, it can be coated with polypropylene and polyethylene. And it's a combined film. This laminate can be used for bakery goods, cheeses and dried fruits, confectionaries. And again, cellulose is a plant-based material. It's a natural material. So we can have combination with polyethylene and cellulose. So the laminated film, it can be used for crusty bread, bacons, coffee, cooked meats, cheeses. And cellulose is state paper foil and polyethylene. This is again four layered. So these are used for dried soups. Metallized polyester, polyethylene, it is used for coffee. Again, it prevents the escape of order. So polyethylene aluminium paper, it is used for dried soup, dried vegetables and chocolates. And then we can also use co-extruded films. And uh, co-extruded films are generally of high impact using polystyrene and PET. The polystyrene is again used for making foams or thermoformed containers. So this is co-extruded with PET and it is used as a packaging material for butter and margarine it is used as a tub in these cases and polystyrene it can also be conjugated with pvdc to pack juices and milk bottles and again polystyrene it can be extruded with pvdc and polyethylene to be used as tubs for other dairy products and coffee and mayonnaise polystyrene it has a basic property of strength and we are using this property to develop tubs and other things because it helps in that particular application where we need to give bulky storage or bulky transportation. 
little slight it is it may be a retail pack but will be a slightly higher side so such kind of packs can be developed using styrene based extruded films now improved packaging when we improve the packaging materials or when we use good packaging materials it is not only helping in marketing but it is also help enhancing the international trade so improving packaging materials is also important for a country every country they are also giving equal importance to packaging materials also packaging need to be standardized based on the size and grading this will help not only help in reducing the labor but will also protect the quality of the food product and it will be helping good relationship between the sellers and buyers and also packaging material it should be able to reduce the waste consumers nowadays they don't want to have bulky packaging and waste most of them they go for environment friendly packaging system even if they have to rely on the other kinds of packaging materials they always see that if it can reduce the waste so that is again important criteria and also packaging when you select the packaging material it should address all these aspects which we had discussed from the beginning the material characteristics the product characteristics from the logistics aspect from the marketing aspect sales aspect from the consumer point of view from all these aspects need to be addressed the most important one is the content because food is very perishable and that is a very important thing and each component we have to know we are not just attracting the consumer we are also intending to keep the food safe and extend its shelf life and also keep its nutritional quality safe without any losses so we need to know everything and packaging we cannot say that it is an independent area it is a combination of all the sciences so everything has to be studied in detail before we go for a packaging material now let's wind up for today and in this class we had discussed about different types of foods and uh, respective packaging materials it, it is not necessary that we have to select whatever packaging material has been mentioned here we have to go for that only it is not necessary like that but if you can come up with new ideas that is also good and uh, again uh, researches are being done to develop biodegradable and edible packaging systems so that is again encouraged and uh, we can design new packaging systems also it depends upon the requirement of the consumer and the producer so let's find up and thank you